The broken plurals جمع التكسير So what is a broken plural in Arabic? It is called broken plural because, because the singular is not kept sound, i.e. intact. There's some changes to the singular. For example, the harakat may change, the um, letters may drop or letters may get, get added. So this is the definition of broken plural. The easiest way to remember what is a broken plural, it is a plural that does not have the una, ina, atun, atin ending. Therefore, it will be called a broken plural. So whenever you see a word that is plural, how do you know it is plural? Well, you'll know from the meaning. For us, we're going from Quran, of course, translating. So any word that is plural does not have these endings. We will call it a broken plural. Take the word pen, which we, alhamdulillah, know is qalam. For that, if we put it in the Muslim table, we have qalamun, qalaman, qalamin. For the singular, it will be exactly the same because it has tanween. It belongs to the 85%. For the dual, again, exactly the same as every other dual in Arabic that we've learned so far. Qalamani, qalamaini, qalamaini. But the plural will not be qalamuna, qalamina. What is the plural? Aqlamun, aqlaman, aqlamin. So this is a broken plural. Again, note there's some changes at the beginning of the word, whereas with the standard there is no change and we have the suffixes that we've already learned. Of course, the word qalam is a name of a thing, so there is no female equivalent of that. It's simply this. So broken plural is one in which in the plural, the word does not end with the standard endings that we've learned so far. The broken plurals also themselves conform to certain patterns, but the patterns are too many. Too many for us to cover at this stage, even at advanced level, people don't tend to memorize the patterns and so, on, and so on. Because there's no simple rule really to say that this singular will end up in this broken plural pattern. There are about 47 uh, patterns that are commonly used in the Arabic language, I believe. We don't really need to know any of that nature. We don't need to go into that depth. What is important to note about broken plurals is that they are very common very very common in arabic and therefore you can't just take a singular word and always assume that it will have a sound masculine or feminine plural so here are some examples of words i've got on the screen with different endings which you can see which are different patterns of broken plural the first one we have is alimun which means a scholar the plural of it is ulama'u and then we have ghaniyun which means rich the plural of it is aghniya'u and then we have miftahun which means key Keys will be mafatihu. Again, mayyitun, deceased or deaf person. Mauta, again, completely different type of ending. Qalbun, heart. The plural, qulubun. Nafsun, soul or self. Nufusun. Baytun, one house. Buyutun, houses. Jabalun, mountain. Jibalun, mountains. So you can see here, there are many different patterns and I strongly recommend at this stage we don't get involved with trying to remember patterns and so on. All we need to do, just like we're going to learn the singular, we're going to learn the plural. If it has a broken plural, we just need to learn it. And as we go through, inshallah ta'ala, we'll see it's relatively easy. It's not as complex as it is made out to be. So all we need to do with the plurals is remember that if it doesn't follow the standard, we're going to call it broken and we'll just memorize them or we, by usage. For example, qalbun uh, qulubun, we'll just learn them as we go along. The subject of broken plural is going to come repeatedly in our class, as especially as we move on in our lessons. One of the most important and weird things to remember in Arabic is that grammatically, broken plurals, particularly of non aqil again, remember anything that's not an angel, jinn or human, their broken plural are treated in Arabic as singular feminine, singular feminine. So non aqil their broken plurals, are treated as singular feminine as well as the feminine sound plurals we will see inshallah ta'ala in the examples so we have re to remember this point about aqil non-rational beings broken plurals can be treated as singular feminine which is very weird for us at the beginning so let's give you an example what i mean by that if you remember the sentence structure that we went through before when we has al when we had al baytu jadidun mubtada and khabar here i'm saying the house is new the house is new i hope you can see that again if you can't go back to the previous lessons al baytu jadidun the house is new please note if i want to say the houses are new the houses are new i say al buyutu jadidatun now hopefully you can recognize that jadidatun is feminine not only that, I hope you can recognize that it is singular feminine. 
singular feminine. Please note, so I'm not matching the number here. Singular feminine. Why? Because that is the rule in Arabic. Broken plurals are treated as singular feminine. Let's look at one more example. Baytun jadidun. A new house. Or I can say new houses. Now remember the word bayt is masculine. But here buyutun. Houses. Jadidatun. Jadidatun is singular feminine. So don't worry about this. I'm going to explain this through examples, inshallah. This is the most complex thing as far as broken plurals is concerned in Arabic. Inshallah, ta'ala, soon you'll get your head around it. So just to summarize, in Arabic, I say he is a boy. She is a girl. I also have to say he is a house or he is a mosque. She is a school because there is no it. But if I want to say they are houses in Arabic. I will be saying she are houses. She are houses. She are houses. Something strange for us to get used to. But inshallah, through practice, you'll get used to it. So this is the most complex part of broken plurals that you need to remember. Normally, especially non-aqil, are treated as singular feminine. And we will learn that with examples. And this is why. I just want to introduce it at this stage. Just note it down in your notebooks, inshallah, and through examples we'll get there. One more point, inshallah, and I want you to relax over this one. Arabic is a very rich language, very rich language. Please do not be surprised that there are certain words that are many plurals. For example, akhun, brother, this plural is ikhwanun or ikhwatun. There are others, but these are the two commas that you will see. So you can see one word has more than one plural. Let's look at another example, alimun, scholar. Now you might have heard, I, we can make that into the sound plural also. Alimuna, alimina. That's fine. But it also has a broken plural. Ulama'u. So a word can have multiple plurals in Arabic. It's not uncommon. But again, our concern really isn't the depth of the Arabic language. It is what is used in the Quran. So sometimes you will see some words with more than one plural. For example, the word kafir or kafirun, a disbeliever. Kafiruna. Kafirina, that's there. Also, we have kuffarun, which is a broken plural. So again, don't be surprised with this. I will give you the relevant vocabulary as we go through each lesson where it's necessary. And through practice, inshallah ta'ala, you will get it. So do not be surprised if you come across a word which has more than one plurals. Duals is standard fixed. It's with the plurals where the rel relatively hard work needs to be done by us. Let's summarize and conclude our discussion on number. The first point about singulars. Now, please note, there is no way in Arabic to know whether a word is singular or not easily just by looking at the word. So there's no specific sign. But in most cases, we can use the singular as our base form from which we can launch the dual and most of the sound masculine and sound feminine plurals. The duals, on the other hand, are very easy. They conform to only two endings. Ani in the rafa, aini in the nasab or jar. So muslimani, muslimaini. Please note, any ism that is dual in Arabic, you will come across only these two endings. There is no exception far as I know in the Arabic language. I have not come across anything. So ani and aini are the only two endings that you need to worry about for duals. And that's it. There is nothing more complex about duals. Again, I'm restricting my discussion on isms. Uh, verbs, inshallah, will come to when we, the appropriate lesson comes. But for now, that is all you need to know about the duals. Two endings and that's it. And you can convert any ism in Arabic that has a dual using these two endings. The discussion on plural is where it gets complex. You have the first type, salim, which is sound, and we have the broken. Sound or broken. Sound is very easy, ends up with being either masculine or feminine, and you can easily tell them from the two endings that we are already familiar with. Either it will be una, ina, for rafa, nasab, and jar will be ina, muslimuna, rafa, muslimina, nasab, or jar. For feminine, again, very simple, only two endings, atun and atin. So muslimatun and muslimatin. Again, note, they have tanwin at the end with al, it will be removed. So al muslimatu and al muslimati. And as far as broken plural is a concern, is where the complexity happens and most of the uh, plurals you're going to come across in Arabic will be broken. So you just have to learn them. So in conclusion, if you remember what we said about the singular, the only area of confusion comes in in Arabic is knowing whether the word is singular or it's a broken plural. And that's all the vocabulary you have to learn. Please note, so when you come across a word, you need to learn the singular 
And if it has a broken plural, you need to learn the broken plural. And that's it. So you don't need endless vocabulary. So let's remind ourselves what the simple formula for remembering broken plurals. It is simply any plural that does not have the four endings that we've now familiar with. Broken plurals are very, very common in Arabic and they follow many, many different patterns. At this stage, we are not going to, inshallah, go into the patterns. At this stage, inshallah, in the ne uh, next few lessons, I will be introducing them slowly and talking about different types of Arab. In there, we will bring the discussion of broken plurals again and it will reappear, inshallah, uh, when it comes to usage in sentences. Now, non aqil plurals, non aqil plurals are treated grammatically as singular feminine. Singular feminine. Broken plurals, even of aqil, can sometimes be treated as singular feminine. Please just note the examples I've given you for now. Don't worry about it too much as we are going to go through this in examples. Quick review of the four properties. Again, I bring the image to you. I don't need to go through it in detail. Alhamdulillah, now you're in a position where you know how to identify definiteness. You know how to identify, identify gender, which was in lesson number three. Now we completed our discussion lesson number four. And we, of course, we introduced uh, Rafa Nasab and Jar already to you in the first session. I've gone through it very slowly. The lessons are longer than I planned to be, but I wanted to go through the points because this is the foundation level. You get this right and the more complex stuff will become very easy. You get this wrong and you get confused here, then you will get even more confused as you go along. And what is something very simple will become unnecessarily complex. So please review these lessons, inshallah. I hope and pray that you guys are benefiting from them. They've been done for your purpose. And it's so difficult to teach students where they're not in front of you directly. But I hope and pray, inshallah, we've done some justice to explaining these four properties to you. Al-Lazi'i Al-Lama Bil-Qalama